Hello everybody, this is a response to um, a video by Robert Z called uh, The Mother of All Subscriber Contests. Um, so it's a vinyl community related video and a uh, subscriber contest uh, that he has started. Now I was very amused by this video. Um, this is another example of someone who uh, can be extremely humorous on camera which uh, is something I'm mostly not. And uh, it's usually something that I stay away from. Um, I mean, reacting to videos like that, um, or not reacting, but um, uh, taking part in a contest that demands a little more than just holding up a record and to say that it's a great mixture of uh, fascinating psychedelic rock and uh, jazz funk like I say about almost every record. So this is more in the deep end of the swimming pool as far as thought and language goes and uh, so probably I will be drowning a little bit. But I felt it's such an interesting topic. Um, many things come to my mind after I have just listened to this video by Robert. And First of all, I, I had no idea. I had no idea that there has ever been any kind of drama on the VC. It's just not how I perceive it. Um, it's completely new to me. But uh, that is already probably telling a little bit uh, about uh, uh, my own uh, inhibitions uh, around the vinyl community. And um, so let's get on with it. First of all, <laughs> uh, I'm not a very social person. I do not have friends and I do not hang with anybody and honestly I couldn't be bothered. Uh, this is all rather meaningless to me. This is not a statement about anything or anybody. This is just a statement about me. I and mean, this is just how I kind of set up my life uh, with uh, all the downsides that belong to it. And um, so uh, that's in a sense, that's not a bad place to be if your major passion is music, uh, because uh, then you can spend a lot of time uh, dealing with music, discovering new music, uh, time that otherwise you would spend somewhere in a pub listening to some pointless drivel by some drunk guy that calls himself your friend or something like that. Never bothered me. But... Um, it creates a problem within anything you would call a community because uh, I'm kind of, uh, I don't gel very well with other people. I am not very, uh, I don't find it easy to to make contact, but mostly to, I don't mind contacting people. It's not like I'm shy. It's just like I, I really lack the ability to perpetuate any kind of uh contact or relationship so that's has always been a bit of a problem um, and uh, that also means that um, whether I like it or not I will always be on the fringe of the VC I will never kind of get closer to the fire in the middle to the heat of it all because uh, um, for most people it will be always who, who's this guy? Who, who, have I seen him before? Who, who is that? So um, that's all right. I'm not. Uh, this is this video is not meant to be a catalog of complaints. Um, I leave that to the uh, kind of middle face of uh, the Pink Floyd discography. Um, I uh, experience we see and the world in general as a rather apt foil to my own behavior. So uh, if there is anybody to blame, then it's obviously uh, myself. Um, and um, I don't know, here in Germany there's this saying that you can't jump over your shadow. I don't know if you can say that in English too. Uh, certain proverbs do exist on in both languages. Uh, but uh, the point is, I can only change uh, as much more is oftentimes not possible unless you want to live in a in a world where you constantly wear kind of a mask on your face which 
basically I've done decades of my life. I mean, um, I've not always been this kind of a bum that I'm now. I participated in the daily life of going to the office in a train and uh, and smile at everyone and to be friendly and. Um, it's it takes a lot of energy actually if you pretend that you are part of the society while you are not so um it's a bit similar with vc to some extent um so uh, when there is drama i kind of miss out on it because nobody tells me that there is drama so <laughs> that's what i that's what i felt so interesting about this video by robert uh, it's it, it was suggesting a, a certain dimension of this scene or community uh, that I definitely was not aware of. Uh, yeah, um, but this brings us to the actual contest uh, task in question here. Um, talking about the less positive aspects of vinyl community and Robert made it very clear that he doesn't want people just slagging off uh, other people or just complaining that if if you want to make a, if somebody wants to make a video that is full of praise and and uh, joy over um, this wonderful subculture, then uh, have a go at it. Um, I just think that uh, it's kind of interesting when I focus only on the negative here uh, because uh, the positive remarks have been made before a lot and uh, uh, I think the negative not so much but it's really important to see it in a certain context. Uh, first, the first context that I'm trying to push here is the before mentioned fact that I'm not a very social person and uh, to some extent uh, I'm sure some people would evoke terms and conditions like uh, social anxiety. I don't apply that to myself because I know that people, that are people around uh, that have real problems, that have real kind of first degree cases of social anxiety. I just, I just don't see myself in that league. And uh, that's why, that's why I don't think I should uh, apply that to me, to myself. It's much more likely that I'm a bit of a lazy guy when it comes to other people. I'm just this kind of a lazy loner slash stoner that just does not give that much a damn. And again, that's not sounds that's not something that is throwing me into some uh, into some uh, depression. It's just how I am. But it leads to the fact that uh, uh, while a scene or why while a community like VC is extremely inclusive it does not change the fact that there are some natural dynamics going on there, which means it's inclusive, it's inviting, but you kind of have to work your way towards the middle as far as you can get. Uh, and uh, that's not something I'm very good at, so I kind of always remain on the fringes. Even to the rather charming uh, extent of the occasional the occasional uh, godfather or seniority of vinyl community standing up and commenting under my videos sometimes the puzzlement over the fact that my videos don't draw more attention and it should um, and uh, how can that be? Well, um, it's not the music I guess, it's not my ability to speak English, it's much more my lacking ability to forge connections, to forge friendships and stuff like that. So um, why is it so important for anything I'm gonna say? Just in the sense that I don't project any guilt, any blame on vinyl community. I'm, I'm not expecting anything from a community like that, so um, this is not a video where I'm trying to moan as much as possible. But uh, it does create situations where you have to swallow your pride a little bit. I mean, it's 
a certain a certain keyword probably would be something like uh, VCLT. That's just uh, a bit uh, beyond uh, my reach, so to speak. <laughs> no one ever on this planet, uh, with the exception of my wife probably, that knows nothing about music, no one on this planet, planet would ever go to a post office to send me a record. I mean, I've <laughs> never received anything like that and nobody, nobody would ever do that. And I'm not bitter about it. I'm not bitter about it because as I probably explained quite detailed now um, this is all just a reaction to I mean the world echoes back exactly the same way as I have been uh, shouting out so um, there is no reason for me to be surprised but um, that does not change the fact that we all have a little bit of a lizard brain somewhere in the back of our heads so it is true that uh, when I'm going through um, VC videos, kind of thinking, yeah, I want to watch some some new videos by uh, vinyl community people. Let's see what's what's new, what records uh, can I find, etc. That when I when I see in the title of the video some, some something with uh, VCLT, it's given for me that I don't want to watch it. It's like no, no, I don't. I don't want to watch people kind of be grateful with the tears in their eyes because they got records from somebody. Because um, then I uh, will probably be a little bit bitter. But I don't want to be bitter, but uh, that is a kind of a reflex that uh, probably everybody has. So it kind of forces me into a rather intellectual monologue with myself. And uh, that's kind of the interesting thing about it, that you uh, you are suddenly forced to question uh, your your character and your motives. And um, as I said, on, an, on a completely intellectual level, I'm no bitter at all because I don't see I don't see any any reason for the VC to react to me differently than it already does based on the videos I'm sending into the community so uh, there is no uh, there is no contradiction there but obviously from time to time the lizard brain kicks in and thinks like yeah yeah how nice for you getting records from someone but um, it's just a short impulse that um, I can have a grip on yeah there are always like 10 seconds every month where my leading thought is, yeah, fuck VCLT, really, fuck VCLT. But um, 10 seconds is not that much, isn't it? But as you will certainly agree with me, everything I have said the last 15 minutes is more something about me than something about the vinyl community. The benefit of a basic philosophical education is that you usually stop projecting your blame on scenes and communities and uh, um, accept the fact that uh, the world is just reacting to yourself exactly the way you are triggering it. So um, generally I'm rather fine with that. So uh, is there something else that I probably that I kind of dislike about the VC? You know, I think it's at this point it's important to note that um, well let's put it this way I would personally I would regard myself as a misanthrope when I was like 15 16 I, I, I read a essay written about the German philosopher Arthur Schopenhauer um, where for the first time I um, encountered a description of what a misanthrope is and um, even back then age 15, I was quite fascinated by the notion how how well it described my own view <laughs> on the world. And um, so what I'm trying to say is that my issues with this civilization are so large and so huge that any kind of grievances I might have with the vinyl community, it's so subtle that it hardly registers on the radar of 
my brain, so to speak, compared with the, the beef I have with the rest of the world. And that's kind of interesting because it's, it's describing a little bit what the vinyl community actually means to me as, as being this area this area where all the drivel and all the bullshit that I have to encounter in the rest of the world basically does not exist or at least is quite uh, filtered out because uh, the only issue that counts here is the music and uh, oftentimes in a very apolitical manner and that's something I find very appealing so uh, it's this corner of the world where the bullshit that's going on outside, everywhere, particularly right now, does not count that much. And uh, there, is some, there is something rather soothing about it. Certainly something that um, can help you to uh, calm your mind, so to speak. Or to quote Henry David Thoreau on the issue, When I hear music, I fear no danger. I am invulnerable. I see no foe, I am related to the earliest times and to the latest. That statement transcends any kind of doubt you could have about the importance of vinyl community. So uh, since we are here and uh, the issue is uh, what, what may annoy me or what may piss me off about the community, as I said, hardly anything because it's rather this this meditative place for me, <laughs> so there is not that much uh, and uh, and I actually have to dig a little bit deeper to come up with something um, because it's not that obvious to me. So um, what else? Um, well obviously uh, obviously, um, vinyl community has always this propensity to to ignite a certain snobbism in me that's not anybody's fault. Actually, most of the VC people I know have again and again said in their videos that it's absolutely all right to show CDs, uh, that uh, there should not be this kind of a behavior regarding vinyl. I've always agreed with that, but as someone who got rather late to the game, and I don't mean collecting records that I have done basically already 30 years ago, but I mean just participating in this world of YouTube videos. Um, as someone who came relatively late, um, there is always a certain level of zeal that you invoke in yourself without it being necessary. I mean, if I had shown only CDs the last five years, people would still be very accepting, I think. But um, it's quite funny because not long ago, I I went into um, another room over there that I usually use. I do store things and a lot of lot of cartons and boxes there, and I suddenly opened this rather huge box just to realize that it's filled with CDs, not just some throwaway CDs, but really great albums, uh, whole collections. And I thought, oh, this is really wrong. I mean, this is uh, I think the I think the, the, the VC snobbism is starting to uh, unfold and unravel in my mind. So I started to condition myself uh, to listen to CDs more again. So uh, I've always a stack of interesting CDs here on my table, like, like the Civil Surface by Egg, the wonderful Hatfield and the North album, Aircut by Curved Air, a lot of interesting music. Um, yeah, I, I, I set, I, I've set up some shelves and started to put the CDs back uh, on the shelf and to uh, organize them a little bit because I felt like, yeah, there's something wrong with this way of thinking. Particularly because once you think like that, once you think like, yeah, I have to have everything on vinyl because vinyl is king. But once you have become snooty and stuck up about vinyl, it actually makes you frail and susceptible to all those leeches out there uh, that really, really want your money. And uh, so the ability to still embrace the CD 
uh, is actually something that I regard as very healthy. Because it's always important for me to step back and to think, um, yeah, do I really want this for $60 plus postage on vinyl? Or do I prefer to pay $8 for a CD because actually I'm interested in the music and uh, not uh, in this uh, materialistic snobbery? So um, I think that's kind of a direction where I'm trying to condition myself right now because I believe like in the last, last year or something um, I was really very vinyl focused and... Uh, um, kind of getting upset when I didn't get something because it was out of my financial reach or something. And um, it's also important to realize, come on, it's not that important. Um, yeah, I do still believe that uh, it is a bigger and greater statement to have hundreds and thousands of records than to have access to Spotify. Um, I guess that level of snobbery <laughs> will never go away, to be honest. Um, but um, I think it's also important to kind of rein yourself a little back uh, before you go to some real extremes that probably are not worth it. So that's that. Um, um, yeah, is there maybe another, a third, a third uh, grievance I have with the vinyl community? Maybe one, it's not, as I said before, this is all just uh, a rather flat curve of complaints. Um, the, the amplitude of, of my anger over this is very tiny compared with uh, 10,000 other things outside of the world of music that piss me off constantly and all the time. So um, this is all very easy going. But uh, yeah, there is one thing that I always find a little a little bit odd, but at the same time, it again triggers a certain inner monologue, so it's maybe kind of interesting. Um, I would, I would, I would like to know what your, what your position or what your perception is of hot women and vinyl is, and because this is not something that uh, is so relevant relevant in the in the YouTube world, but it's something that's pretty visible for example on Instagram so I, I, I have also an a Instagram account that is actually quite satisfying to my surprise it doesn't go unnoticed that um, there are women that are very good looking and that are posing with record covers in their hands and some of them really exaggerate um, their photographic presence um, Obviously, very much in the spirit of uh, this new world full of influencers and uh, how to uh, get the most, uh, the biggest response out of your photograph. And um, so uh, it's not something that bothers me, but it's true that uh, when I go through my timeline, I see just people, some of them I'm slightly familiar, they always keep these chicks appearing. I mean, they put on the tightest jeans they have, they put on the shortest t-shirt they have, and then they show you their uh, Led Zeppelin record. <laughs> so, <laughs> obviously, again, one could get bitter, because um, it's quite clear that a photo like that will get uh, something like 8,000 hearts or likes or whatever shit is going on on that social media platform, while, I don't know, I mean, I could, ha I could I could cut my face into pieces with a razor blade and then hold up a record. I would still not get um, all those uh, likes uh, than a person like that. And um, now, on an intellectual level, it really doesn't bother me because what do I care? I mean, it's it's not a competition, and um, I'm also I don't I don't I'm not the custodian of a community. So, so why should I speak up? And it has nothing to do with me. Um, it's also, I don't, I certainly, I certainly don't want to feel like the vinyl community is kind of a guys club. Um, that kind of, uh, perception of music, uh, has haunted me long enough when I was younger and a lot of musical styles that I have appreciated 
basically draw only male crowds so i'm kind of used to what it is when you go to a concert and there's basically not a single woman in the audience which is not something that i find in any way uh, appealing um it's just uh uh, it's just the nature of the music and how it was perceived 30 years ago and that's something that has massively changed by now. Any woman appearing on Vinyl Community is very much uh, welcomed by me because I think uh, this, there's still a lot of space, a lot of free room for women. But at the same time, sometimes I believe that I'm not that interested to see all of their tattoos in the photographs and in the videos if you get my my gist here so um the question is uh, is it a good thing is it a bad thing is it does it not matter when they kind of try to get the edge by playing kind of dirty <laughs> by taking off uh, parts of their clothing before they start a video or make a photo it's an interesting it's an interesting debate um the, you could approach it from a slightly uh anthropological or ethnological point of view and um well argue that uh, that in the course of the last 5000 years women had it really shitty enough um being forced to exist in our stupid male presence so just Give them a break, asshole. Why you work yourself up over this nonsense? So yeah, so they want to pose with a record showing a bit of their panties or something. Who gives a shit? Yeah, exactly. And this is kind of how I um, deal with it. But at the same time, <laughs> at the same time, I'm just not the guy to give them my like or my heart. I just <laughs> refuse that and just kind of throw it... Uh, aside and just don't want to see that and I don't think it's machismo or chauvinism or any kind of uh, misogynic bigotry on my part um, it's probably again again my 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 lizard brain probably kicks in and I feel like uh, like when I was talking about those we see people that are popular so they get uh, VCLT records and uh, I don't, it's not like I'm envious, but for 10 seconds it's like, eh. So maybe this is the same. I look at a picture like that and think like, eh. <laughs> But, as I said, on a rather intellectual level, I think it's all completely unimportant and uh, I certainly don't, I don't project any grudge against a woman that uh, just tries to be really sexy looking in front of her stereo now the the philosophical question is this necessary is a valid one to some extent um on the one hand i don't think that a woman or a girl should go the extra mile to kind of hide uh, her appearance so she doesn't look too sexy or something this kind of thinking is completely crazy um i mean this is the vc the VC certainly should not take its cues from Saudi Arabia. But um, at the same time, um, it's a little bit like talking about politics within vinyl community and sex, in a, in a sense, is always political. So um, I understand when somebody thinks, yeah, I like to be, I like politics to be kept out of it and I like hot girls to be kept out of it because that just does not belong here um which seems understandable since uh, most of us are kind of a uh, almost elderly overweight bearded guys uh, with uh, with the history of uh, rather geeky behavior so i have no i have no uh, i have no clear cut answers uh, to that conundrum but uh, it's true that uh, if you are a good looking woman that is posing with records in your underwear you will probably just not get my vote, not that you depend on it. So uh, that's another issue. I don't even know if anybody else on the VC would regard this a a talking point at all. It's it's really not very important, but it just crossed my mind. Uh, it's it's something that I just brush away, kind of like ah, go away. 
I must I must also say that um, when I was a bit younger, I spent like five or six years working in a porn company. So I uh, I was basically a porn producer. And um, so um, if you want to bore me, just show me skin. It's just like oh, I'm I'm really more interested in kind of cerebral stuff. <laughs> really, <laughs> I'm not interested in naked women. Once you've seen more vaginas than movies, uh, it kind of gets dull. So those were three themes uh, from the vinyl community that I personally um, kind of uh, regard critical. Again, without it really being a bother of any kind. Um, Robert mentioned a kind of a question in his video just as a suggestion for an answer and that was is there anyone on the VC that was prolific before and then went away, disappeared or stopped and whom I would probably wish back? That's a good question. First one immediately that comes to mind is uh, Miko from Finland, uh, the vinyl corner, which is quite interesting because uh, I don't really listen to this kind of music that uh, in the last years Miko was presenting so I'm really not interested in, uh, in hard rock heavy metal and uh, prog metal and doom metal and speed hard rock or whatever <laughs> it's really far away from my personal taste but um, I've always enjoyed his videos and looked them nonetheless because uh, there was something uh, hypnotic about his way of presenting uh, records and uh, I've always enjoyed that. There was just this incredible level of uh, being relaxed and uh, being totally unstressed and I've, I've really enjoyed that. This was always very... I've always kind of sympathized because like me English was not his first language so um, I've always uh, looked to his videos kind of for guidance and to find the courage to do it as well without being able to 100% rely on, uh, on, on, on the language. And um, yeah, he, I, I think he stopped making videos like half a year ago, almost a year ago. And uh, um, I know, I guess he's all right because I think occasionally I see him appearing on Instagram. I guess from time to time you just lose the interest or the energy to continue always to putting out these these uh, vinyl videos. And uh, But I've always enjoyed his channel. There's There was just something uh, very nordically charismatic about him. And by the way, um, it, was, it would be totally wrong to reduce him to hard work and heavy metal. I was just being glib about it. Miko has a great knowledge of all kind of progressive rock and jazz fusion and all this stuff. So uh, this was just, when I started to, to watch his videos, he was just deeply in this kind of a metally uh, phase. And um, musically, it's not speaking to me, but um, I loved his videos. There was something about them that was really almost hypnotic. Yeah, um, yeah, maybe something else on the rather positive side and that's a bit of a difficult it's a bit difficult to talk about it uh, um, it's almost something that has a probably the ability to kind of alienate certain people that may be subscribed to my channel or occasionally watch my videos i maybe should not talk about it but it's just something that I'm thinking about right now. Um, how to approach this thought? Um, look, the the German philosopher and poet Johann Wolfgang Goethe said something over 200 years ago when he was talking about the French. And uh, he was comparing the French and the Germans, which had this hereditary antagonism or conflict going between them for centuries. And um, he once said, um, the French are amazing and exciting as a whole nation, but completely obnoxious and unbearable as individuals. Compared with the Germans, that are amazing and exciting as individuals, but are completely obnoxious and unbearable as a whole nation. 
which is a 200 years old remark and uh, one can have a debate about how this may still be relevant or not. But um, it's a kind of a duality of, of nations because I think it can be applied to many nations and uh, it can certainly be applied to the United States of America. And um, I deeply feel that um, Americans are always, at least that's my experience, always amazing and exciting as individuals whenever I have encountered them. And at the same time, they are incredibly unbearable as a nation. And uh, I have met Americans that have shown an incredible level of integrity, honesty, directness. Um, you can meet a lot of people in the United States that are just... that would rather die than to break their word. So you find a lot of um, amazing uh, human potential there and, and really upright people. At the same time, it's quite interesting to observe America over the ocean and living here in Europe where we have kind of spent uh, generations since the end of the Second World War whole generations kind of spent being swept away by this uh, idea of freedom and Americana and who have been year by year more let down in a process that goes on for well almost 40 years now if not more. So um, what does this have to do with the VC? Well in a sense a lot because um, through VC I'm actually in contact with a lot of people that are Americans and um, this is rather helpful because if I would remove these kind of uh, encounters out of the equation all that would remain is a rather bleak dystopian look at a country that uh, at a certain point one can only regard as uh, hostile and dangerous to our own existence regardless what uh, the icing on the cake called Hollywood may suggest to us. So this is kind of a side effect of vinyl community in my life that um, I watch a lot of Americans talking about music and it keeps reminding me that, that these are wonderful people individually and they are not responsible for every aspect of that giant quagmire that uh, surrounds them and that surrounds even us here at a certain point. So um, I don't know if this, if I brought this point across uh, very well, um, but I'm pretty sure that without the VC, I would have probably a rather more dismissive and negative look at the United States at this point in time. But um, this kind of apolitical interaction with people certainly helps me to realize that a collective blaming of an entire nation is a fallacy and would be a wrong thing to do or wrong way of thinking. And it's an issue here in Germany. I mean that in, here in Germany we talk about anti-Americanism and that's something that uh, certainly uh, is part of the debate and um, a lot of people are kind of surprised and upset that something like that even exists and um, I understand where this mindset is coming from, but um, it's just not an attitude that I would share because I simply come across too many amazing Americans and um, this kind of a collective projection just really goes against my own grain. So this is a super giant video and I really don't think that anybody is still watching at this point and uh, maybe it's for the better. But um, I just felt that Robert Z's um, video was quite thought-provoking and stimulating. And I really like your gritty style and the humor and um, the occasional outburst of choleric behavior. I certainly sympathize. And so this was my video. And if you have watched it up until now the entire time, you might very easily be almost as crazy as I am. See you.